we lift up our voices. Jesus Christ. It is written that at the beginning of every week, at the beginning of every month, every living thing, everything that breathes will come before the Lord to worship Him. It's the prophecy God announced in Isaiah 66, 23. We are the first day of the week, rather, this is Sunday. We do not want to be in church for the sake of it. We don't connect just to be connected. We are not in front of a computer, of a radio, of a smartphone. No, we are in the presence of God. And in the presence of God, somebody says amen. And because we are in the presence of God, we want to take time, take a few moments to honor him, appreciate him. We started worshiping, celebrating him. It's not something automatic. It's a fruit, an expression of worship that comes from a sincere heart, a heart that's grateful. Lord, we want to thank you. Take time, my brother, for a few moments. Lift up your voice. Set your heart ready. Avoid distractions. Don't even type comments in the chat. You're not typing that for God. So leave your screen and take time to lift up your voice in the presence of God. Lift up your, your voice. Don't be distracted, my brother, my sister. Be spiritual. Lift up your voice. Give thanks to God. He wants you to offer thanksgiving to him. We are the first day of the week. We are Sunday. Every flesh, every living soul must stand in the presence of God to appreciate God, to worship God, Abba Father. Lift up your voice and give him thanks. Appreciate him, celebrate him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. May your sources be in him, may your heart be ready for him. I want to give you thanks, I want to celebrate you, my love, my Lord, my Jesus. You are worthy to be worshipped on this first day of the week. We celebrate you, we bless you, Abba Father. When we woke up this morning, we still had the breath in us. Father, we are grateful. Is there somebody, when you're giving God thanksgiving, you will never do too much. God will never tell you you're giving me thanks too much. You are worshiping too much. You are being too grateful. No, you will never do too much. So take the time to lift up your voice and give him thanks. The Spirit of God. We want to take the time to appreciate you, take the time to honor you, to cherish you, to bless you. Receive our thanksgiving. Look, I can speak. Look, I am seated. Look, I am standing. Look, I can move. Look, I still have the breath of life. It's by the goodness of God that I'm still alive. No, it's not the dead who are gone, who can appreciate God, who can offer thanksgiving to God. But, but it is us, the living, and because you gave me the grace to be counted among the living, on this first day of the week, I come to thank you. I come to celebrate you for the week that has gone and for the week that is starting. I come and commit my life, my home, my destiny into your hands, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Receive our thanksgiving because the Lord is good. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. Your mercies are everlasting today still. Your mercy will speak this week still. Your mercy will speak. Your compassions are renewed every morning. We are grateful, Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, through whom we render to God the Father thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ, we are grateful. Thank you, Father. Be blessed, Lord Jesus receive all the glory receive our thanksgiving father in the name of jesus spirit of jesus spirit of god spirit of god 
we acclaim you, we celebrate and honor you. As we acclaim God, we are offering thanksgiving unto God. As we acclaim God, we are expressing our appreciation unto him. Are you grateful? Are you in a place where you appreciate the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Through the Holy Spirit, are you lifting up celebration unto his honor? It's not written that we must clap unto God, but we must shout for joy unto the, the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Receive all honor, appreciation, praise, worship, celebration, Abba, Abba, Father, in the name of Jesus. There is somebody connected. There is a church that is connected. All the assembled churches, all the people gathered in a church or at home, take the time, leave your keyboard, leave your keyboard, and take the time to appreciate God. Take the time to celebrate God. Take the time to speak to your creator, your lover, your savior. Receive our thanksgiving. Father, in the name of Jesus the Messiah, we have taken the time to render thanksgiving unto you. If you've taken that time, let's hear a name and of thanksgiving to God. Give God thanksgiving. Give God an amen. We thank you. We bless you. In the name of Jesus, we have taken the time, Father, to offer thanksgiving unto you. If you did it with all your heart, give the amen of someone who did it. Give a better amen of someone who did it. It is written. You know, when we gather, every time we gather in the presence of God, it's not something ordinary. No, we are connecting with God, fellowshipping with God. In fact, when we go to church, it's to meet God. I'm telling you that when we go to church, it's to meet God. It's to meet him. It is written that as Jesus was going to be baptized in Luke 3, 21, the heavens opened. The heavens opened. So God also wants to open the heavens for you today. Amen. He went to be baptized. And as he was going to be baptized, the heavens opened. And when the heavens opened, he saw the Spirit of God come upon him as a dove. Today the Spirit must come down. Today the Spirit must come down. But for that, you need to open heaven. And the person who opens the heavens, it's you yourself or first for 60 seconds lift up your voice and say lord today may the windows of heaven open open my life because i must meet the most important person on earth lift up your voice and ask god to open the heavens say lord visit me lord visit me i want to meet god this morning I've not come to meet the pastor. I've not come to meet the pastor in my connected church, in my home where I am connected. I've not come to meet Pastor Castanu. No, I have come to meet with God. I have come to meet with the Spirit of God. I have come to meet Jesus the Christ. Lord, I pray I must meet with you today. Today is the day you have made. It's not an ordinary day. I want to meet with God. Oh God, Jesus was praying so lift up your voice and pray with all your heart pray with the energy with, of your destiny that's at stake you must meet God your life can change in a second in one service in five minutes the life of any man can radically change are you asking God father grant us the grace to meet you with your by your spirit Lord Jesus I want to see you I want to meet you Lord may heavens open may the heavens open over my life just like the heavens open over the life of Jesus and there was a meeting let there be a divine encounter let there be a divine encounter father in the name of Jesus the Christ I need to meet with you Lord Jesus by the Holy Spirit I ask you with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus father as it is your will I have no doubt as to the facts the fact that you will manifest yourself in the life of someone who wants to meet you. You will answer someone's heart cry today in this first day of the week. 
in anticipation, I already say, receive all the honor, the praise, and receive all the glory through our thanksgiving. We are grateful to you because today, every Sunday, is a day of an encounter. Every day is a day of an encounter in the intimacy of the Spirit, by the power of the Spirit, because of the blood that was shed, through which we now have access to the majestic presence of God and of Jesus the Christ. Do you want to meet God? Can you say amen where you are? Lord, we thank you. Thank you because this morning you anoint our understanding. You enlighten the eyes of our hearts. You give us the grace not only to listen, but to understand. We don't want to listen for the sake of it, but we want to listen to understand. And as we understand, we want to receive faith. And as we receive faith, as we receive faith, we want to experience the miraculous, the accomplishment of the prophecies spoken concerning us. We are grateful, inspire the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts. Arts. Don't give glory to a pastor, never, but from the rising of the sun to its going down, give glory to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Christ, the Messiah, the Shiloh, the most beautiful of all the sons of men, the prince of the kings of the earth, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the only name by which we can be saved, the name that is sovereignly highly lifted at the right hand of the Father, the name of Jesus, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the miracle worker, Jesus who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire, Jesus the Christ, you are present by your spirit. We honor your presence, spirit of Jesus. We bless you. Receive our thanksgiving, Father. You wanted it so. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Is there someone who is ready? Is there someone who is available? Is there someone connected to the grace to receive grace upon grace? In the name of Jesus the Christ. If there's someone who is grateful and who is available everywhere, in every church, lift up. A mighty amen. I said, let your amen sound aloud. Because it is written that cries of triumph and salvation will arise in the tent of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord is highly lifted. The right hand of the Lord manifests his power. The power of God is ab about to fall into someone's life today. Someone's destiny is about to change today. Shout for triumph. Is there a righteous, the Lord upholds the righteous, the Lord establishes the righteous, the Lord visits his people, the Lord is glorified in the midst of his people, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we honor you spirit of God, spirit of Christ, spirit of the promise glorify Jesus the Christ, don't glorify your servant, but glorify Jesus the Messiah Jesus the Christ to you be all praise and honor honor and appreciation, celebration, acclamation. No, you will never do enough. Receive honor, receive praise, and receive all the glory, our triumph, and our Savior. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed the Father by the Holy Spirit, and someone gives a mighty triumphant amen. Lord, we thank you. We are here, we are available and ready to receive from you, to meet with you anytime, any moment, any instant during this service. As we are in a local church or connected from our homes, if we are not distracted, Holy Spirit of God, we are ready to receive from you what you want to give unto us, what you want to communicate to your church this morning. Spirit of God, we honor you. We wait on you on you alone, nothing else. Everything is by you, only by you. Glorify Jesus, visit your church, visit your people that we are. We need you, Spirit of God. 
thank you. We honor you and we acclaim you. We clap unto you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can someone acclaim God? Please have a seat in his magnificent presence. Please have a seat in his magnificent presence. Glory be to God. Can someone say amen? Before I start today's message, which will be what it is, I always take the time to honor the father of the house, our father, us all, Pastor Ivan, who is not here this morning. So I must always repeat the same thing. It is not him, right? So if you're disappointed, sorry, it's not Pastor Ivan, it's the least of all. So we bless God for his servant who took a few days to rest with our blessing and support. I've not heard your amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We bless God for the churches connected, for all those who are connected online or right here. You're welcome in his magnificent presence. Amen. Today I'd like to speak on the Lord's behalf according to the instructions received by Pastor Ivan. Last week, God spoke to us of two weapons, two important weapons to shine. He spoke about the weapon of competency and the, uh, the weapon of the anointing. Amen. And today I would like to continue on the message I gave during the conference, which I had not finished, which I will still not finish today. But as we are still on the theme of the importance of shining, Jesus said, you are the light of the world and the destination of light, its purpose is to shine. Say with me, I'm born to shine. Shining is not just a matter of speaking, no, it's not, you know, it is to shine in the midst of darkness. It means in the midst of the demonic atmosphere, the satanic atmosphere. And during the conference, we started speaking about an extremely important topic, a key topic for anyone who truly wants to shine in the world, who wants to become a true light, to become a true light in their generation and in this world of darkness. This world is a world of darkness. First John 5.19 tells us we are of God. We are of God. But the entire world is under the yoke of the evil one, under the oppression of the evil one. My brother, there is a spiritual world that is totally real that surrounds the natural world. In fact, the natural world, you know, is controlled by the spiritual realm. If you want to overcome, if you want to shine in this world of darkness, you first must shine in your spiritual life. If you want to overcome, you must have overcome spiritually first. If you want to triumph in the spirit, in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual world, you must have triumphed. He who triumphs in the spiritual, it will be enforced in the natural. Any spiritual victory always has a side effect in the natural world, amen, and I will continue. So if we truly, sincerely want to shine in this world in the midst of darkness, if we want to manifest the light God has called us to manifest, we must follow the model. We must always follow the original model. You don't need to look for new ways. It, it's not worth it. Go back to the beginning, follow the model who is called Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Last time we saw, therefore, that when it comes to Jesus Christ, God told us in John 3, verse 34, for he whom God sent, speaking of Jesus, him whom God has sent, speaks the words of God, for God does not give the spirit God does not give him the spirit by measure. We said that Jesus had a particularity over all the prophets and all the men that walked upon the earth. He had a particularity when he came, as he was sent by the Father, he received a special grace. The grace he had was that he was full of the spirit. He walked in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the spirit. He was not full of the spirit, but full of the fullness of the wholeness of the spirit. Can you say the fullness of the spirit? My brother, my sister, it's very important to understand. It's capital, it's major to understand the fullness of the spirit. Can I continue? We saw that if we leave the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, if we leave the Holy Spirit aside, 
Satan had, has won. But if we bring back the Spirit of God in the center of all that we are, into the center of all that we do, Jesus did nothing as Satan again for 30 years. We saw in Luke 2, verse 52, listen very well. It is written that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, so in spiritual stature, and in grace and favor before God and before men. Someone can grow, someone can grow in wisdom, someone can grow in spiritual stature, height, someone can grow in grace, favor, God's favors, amen. Someone can grow before God and before men. So men can say, wow, you are wise. Men can say to you, wow, you are wise. You look spiritual. You look mature. You have this grace. You have the grace to sing, the grace to pray. You have this or that. Good. People can say that and see it. And God himself can see it. Yet, 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 he did not shine. He did not impact his generation. He did not save the world as long as he had not had his encounter with the one from above called the Holy Spirit. My brother, you can be good, humanly speaking. Men can appreciate us on a human basis, but it means nothing. Can we continue? We need to go further. Jesus in Luke 2 was fine, but in Luke 3, he went a bit further. He went to the encounter. You need the encounter. You need the encounter. You can grow in wisdom. You can grow in height. You can look mature spiritually. You can know your Bible. You can be someone spiritually balanced. You can even pray. That's not a problem. You can have a certain prayer life. You can have some spiritual graces. Luke 2, 52, but you need to go further. You need to go to Luke 3. Verses 21, 22. Then you need to go to Luke 4, verse 1. Then you need to go to Luke 14. Luke 4, verse 14, rather. And then Luke 4, verse 18. Am I okay to continue? You will see God grow, God make us grow step by step. We need to meet God. Say with me, I need to meet God. What encounter? The encounter with the Spirit of God. Can someone say amen? I know we're used to speaking of the Holy Spirit. We can speak of the Holy Spirit. There will never be done with it. Jesus told us about the Holy Spirit before leaving. He committed us to the Holy Spirit. It's not us. Jesus say, I'm, said, I'm going to the Father. As I go, I will send you the Spirit. He's called the Spirit of the promise because he was announced a long time ago. But in order for the Spirit to come, I must sacrifice myself for the Spirit to come. My blood must be shed. My brother, the blood of Jesus was totally shed for the Holy Spirit to come and live in us in all its full, his fullness. I refuse to live with a portion of the Spirit. I want the fullness of the spirit to be my portion it's the will of god for you so my brother say amen jesus didn't do anything without the person of the spirit it's good in a christian life always starts with an encounter whoever wants to enter real life the real christian life must come in through the door no one can say to me i'm a christian i'm born again if he has not entered through the door into the kingdom. The door is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The door is the Lamb of God, the Son of God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door. John 10, verse 9. I am the door. Whoever comes through me will be saved. No one can become a Christian, a true Christian, if he has not firstly met the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ. Can you say amen, my brother? You go to church, it's fine, but if you've not had an encounter with the Son of God, who is the Lamb of God, if there was no encounter between the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, and you, you are not yet a Christian. You might be on your way to becoming, but you're not yet a Christian. Encountering the Son of God, Jesus, is important because it's through him you enter the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? But once you enter the kingdom of God, you need another encounter with whom? The Holy Spirit. Jesus is the entrance door into the kingdom, but once we enter the kingdom, life in the kingdom is by the Spirit. You enter through Jesus the Christ. He is the door. And now Jesus says to live in the kingdom, you must walk by the Spirit, live by the Spirit, pray by the Spirit, sing by the Spirit, doing all things by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Everything will be done by him. There is nothing outside of the Holy Spirit. If someone wants to walk without the Spirit, you will walk in the things of the world, in the flesh. It's always by the Spirit. If someone is following me, say amen. So you need an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And today the Holy Spirit wants to meet with you. Yes, I met him yesterday. Yes, 
but there are different levels of encounter. He wants to take you deeper into another level of encounter. If I'm speaking to you, say amen. Today, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God wants to meet with you. He wants there to be another level of encounter. The good news with him is that in Acts 2, we see that they met the Spirit. In Acts 4, they yet met again the Spirit in another measure, level after level different measures today it's another level of measure for you if i'm speaking to you and you want to receive him say amen never be satisfied never be satisfied be constantly thirsty hungry for the spirit of god god i want god i want god or i die give me god it's all i'm asking you give me god i want to meet with god i want to please god i want to know god you want to know me know the son you enter through him and then know the spirit it's by the spirit that you will know the father it's by the spirit that you will know christ jesus it's always by the holy spirit can someone say amen Last week, Pastor spoke about competency. But where does competency come? Be excellent. Where does excellence come from? If he says, prepare this tomorrow, work on yourself, become excellent, decide to become excellent. What is he speaking about? He's speaking of the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. All is in the spirit. Competency is by the spirit. When he comes to live in you, he teaches you to be wise. The wise plan the future. The wise prepare tomorrow. It is the spirit of God that makes you wise. I'm not speaking. Speaking of earthly wisdom that is carnal, I speak of the wisdom that comes from God. He will say, learn this language. If the Spirit comes to live in you and you learn to honor Him and walk with Him, He will make your life a subject of wonder because He will take you 10 years ahead. The Spirit, come on. It is all by the Holy Spirit. Everything in life is the Spirit. Jesus did nothing without the Holy Spirit. Nothing, absolutely nothing. He even said it himself. Can we go on? Can we go on? In John 12, just an example, verse 49, he says, Jesus says, for I have not spoken of my own authority, but the Father who sent me. I am sent of the Father. Any person sent of the Father must do what Jesus did. But the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Jesus says, I only but repeat what the Father said. Who is the Father? The Father is in me by the Holy Spirit. When he speaks of the Father, the Father is in heaven, but also with him. How? By the Spirit of the Father. The envoy from the presence of the Father is called the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Father. Can someone say amen? He did nothing without the Holy Spirit. You and I are trying to do all sorts of things. It won't work without him. We shout, we jump, amen, slogans. It doesn't work. This world is a world of darkness. This world of darkness is a spiritual realm. It's complex. It's hostile to any light that wants to shine. They are hostile. They fight against light. The Bible says the light shines in darkness, but darkness do not, does not want light. They will stop you as much as they can to shine, to become what God called you to be. Darkness, the demonic realm, they will oppose you with all their strength to stop you from becoming what God has called you to be. The Father says, here's what I want for you. And darkness says, never, never, it will not happen for you. We will oppose you. You must simply make sure that the right words, the right conf confessions continue so that you may pierce darkness and shine in the midst of darkness. Jesus, you need more than that. Jesus grew in wisdom. He was a bit more mature at 12. He could speak. He knew the world, but the word, but he could do nothing. He needed to wait for Luke chapter 3, where he met with the person of the Holy Spirit. He knew the word. He studied the word. The Bible said he surprised people. He amazed them at 12, but he did nothing. From 12 to 13, nothing. We didn't see any sick healed we did not see miracles or global impact no we saw nothing wisdom intelligence capacity to express himself well he's eloquent he's elegant he's handsome he's this and that fine but that doesn't change the world it changes nothing he needed an encounter with whom? The glorious Holy Spirit, the envoy from the presence of the Father, the envoy from the presence of God. So my brother, you will tell me again, oh, 
I don't criticize anyone, you see, but I'm telling you, my friends, I beg you, we must follow the way, the pathway of Jesus. He is our reference. It's not you, it's not I, it's Jesus the Christ. Can someone say amen? So on his way to be baptized in the Jordan, on his way to be baptized, he did it because he knew it was time for him to meet the envoy from heaven, the Holy Spirit, and also the Holy Spirit only came when he prayed. The Holy Spirit of God only moves. He doesn't manifest in prayer only, but in a life of prayer. In a life of prayer. A life of prayer. It's the engine through which the Spirit operates, through which the Spirit works, through which the Spirit manifests himself. Not prayer, but a prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, my brother, there's nothing. It's only noise. You can pray without praying. You can pray without impacting. You can pray without results. The key is always he himself, himself, the Holy Spirit, and he will visit you today. He will visit you today. Even if there's only one person, I'm telling you that he sent me today for someone to meet with him, to encounter him. He will reveal himself to someone to, later on, before the end of this service. He will do it. Why? Because he sent me for this purpose. Pastor spoke of the anointing. I have come, sent by the Spirit, to tell you about the anointing not in discourse but in practice you must not only say amen you must experience him and your day to experience him is today if i'm speaking to you give me a better amen give god a better amen we saw that god wants each believer who has received jesus christ who has received the holy spirit to experience the fullness of the spirit that's why we spoke about stephen barnabas that's why we said of stephen and barnabas that they were men full of faith and the holy spirit that we were looking for qualified men in church to look after the distribution of food the ministry of of helps and we found seven people who were full of the holy spirit stay with me full of the holy spirit that means the fullness, the fullness, the fullness. Say it with me. Father, I want the fullness. My brother, you must say it every day. I want the fullness. When we speak of fullness, we speak of the accomplishment of, the, the, of Isaiah 11. He said a branch will come forth from the place of Isaiah, there shall be a rod, a branch shall grow from his roots, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, one, two, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, only one spirit, one personality who is called the Holy Spirit, but who reveals himself, who manifests himself in seven different manners, the seven operations of the spirit, the same Holy Spirit, but he manifests himself. He is the one who, who puts within your heart the fear of God. He is the one who puts within your heart the capacity to know God. He is the one who puts within your heart that thirst for God. He is the one who puts within your heart that grace to fear God because fearing God is a grace. It's not, well, I woke up and I decided to fear God. No, 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 no. No one can fear God, can revere God if God does not grant him that grace. It's you see, everything you want from God, God must grant you the grace for it. Grace gives you capacity. If he hasn't given it to you, leave it. My brother, it's not because you studied the whole growth pathway of the new creation and you've studied everything or every class. It's not because you learned about prayer. I've learned to pray in this class. Okay, pray for two weeks. The world of darkness fights those who pray. So you can hear all the classes on prayer without yet having the spirit of prayer. You can learn everything about prayer. So I pray by the spirit. I pray at all times. Pray by faith. Pray by the word. Pray, pray, pray. Amen, pastor. I got it. Two weeks later, darkness, which is called the darkness of slumber, will catch up with you. You need the spirit of prayer and you will receive him later. I said you will receive him later on. The spirit of prayer. The first thing Satan attacks is prayer. 
He knows that a man or a woman who has a praying spirit is dangerous for darkness. That's why he lets you pray a bit and then you yawn. Monday, an hour, one hour, Tuesday, zero hours, Wednesday, two hours on Thursday to compensate what you missed. And then no, he said pray at all times by the spirit. Make all sorts of prayers and supplications. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Jesus gave them a parable to show them that men ought all always to pray and never give up who can do such a thing only the spirit can make you able and he has an encounter with you today i said he has an encounter with you today you're praying yes he will take you higher higher yet the day when he walked on the water jesus released the people around 6 p.m and he prayed till 3 a.m., nine hours of prayer nonstop. You think everybody can do that? No, that's a grace. And that grace comes upon you today. That grace comes upon every connected church today. But who does those things? It is the Holy Spirit. Everything is done by the Spirit, not by your efforts. Yes, your good intentions are there, but that's not enough. Can we continue? Can we continue? So we spoke about, we started speaking about the seven manifestations, the seven operations of the Spirit. And the first operation, the first manifestation of the Spirit, as it is written in Isaiah, he did not start with the Spirit of the Lord just like that. No, he started with the Spirit of the Lord because this is where the Spirit always starts. In a world of darkness, the Spirit of the Lord, just like with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, comes into your life today specifically to reveal himself to you because he wants you to discover him and he wants to become manifest in your life as the spirit of the of lordship the spirit of dominion can you say amen the spirit of the lord will rest upon you we are speaking about you in isaiah 11 verses 1 and 2 let the spirit of the lord the quality of your amen corresponds to the grace that will be your portion when god speaks you must be careful when he says he will rest on you you must say yes lord i'm here when you are like saying oh well you are not even interested in God, but you see, there is at least one person here today who will experience an encounter with the Spirit. In Acts 10, 44, the Bible tells us, as Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit came down. So while I am speaking, don't even be surprised. I'm asking you not to focus on what will happen next to you. Focus on yourself. May the brothers of security before the end of the service be ready because there may be an overflow of something. I don't know. The spirit can act in a visible manner with noise and he can also manifest himself calmly. But what is sure is that whoever hungers will eat today, will meet God today. Say the spirit of the Lord with me. The first manifestation, and that's where I will dwell today, it's the Spirit of the Lord. My brother, as I speak, the Spirit of the Spirit will fill many people. The Spirit will confirm the word he gave me in the different churches, branches where you are. So don't be distracted because encounters with God can be noisy sometimes and quiet at times, but what matters is the encounter. Can I continue? We saw that the Holy Spirit, so understand, it's it is one and the same spirit, but who manifests himself in various manners. And one of the first manifestations he wants to establish in your life is dominion. And this is the decade of dominion here. So there will be no decade of dominion without the implication, the revelation, without each of you encountering the spirit of dominion with the spirit of dominion or the spirit of lordship or the spirit of the Lord. How does he manifest himself? What does he do? We say he gives you supernatural strength. We see, we saw he gives you supernatural courage. When the spirit of the Lord is upon you, he fills you. Even if you were oppressed, I see you're not even listening to me anymore, right? I'm not, when the spirit of lordship comes, fear, excuse me, fear says, sorry, I, I have no more power here. 
You don't even need to pray for the spirit of fear to go. It goes naturally because the boss has come on board, because the commander in chief, the spirit of dominion, who am I speaking to? I am speaking to you about the spirit of dominion, my brother. He is the one who impacts your soul. You don't even know where that courage comes from, where that bravery comes from. It comes from the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. He fills you with authority, an authority you don't even know to yourself. Well, I don't know you. You, you, you have changed. I knew you, but you are different. Yes, the Spirit of the Lord is the one who anoints you today. And as we speak of the Spirit of the Lord today, I'll put the accent on one of the operations of the Spirit of the Lord. We are not done. It's still the same Holy Spirit, the first manifestation of the Spirit of the Lord, of the Spirit of dominion. What does it do? What does the Spirit of the Lord do? One of the things he is doing with you and wants to do with you is that he wants to clothe you with the power from above. With what? With the power from above. With what? The power from above. With the power from above. You must say it out loud. With the power from above. Jesus told them first. Jesus operated in power. At 30, being filled with the Holy Spirit, that was the introduction to the realm, to the life of power. He went away for 40 days of an intimate encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit instructed him, molded him, prepared him how to walk with me, how to obey me, how to submit to me. I am the envoy from the presence of the Father. You and I, we know each other, but you are on earth and you've lost all that made your divinity you are God, but you no longer resemble a God. I will make you able to live as a God on earth. Jesus said, okay, I've been waiting for you for 30 years. Teach me how to do. Show me how to do it. He says, I'll take you by the hand. I am the envoy of the presence of God. I am the one who brings the presence and the power of God. Trust me, 40 days of an encounter in the intimacy, in the secret between the Holy Spirit and Jesus of Nazareth. That's why the Bible tells us this is how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went from place to place, who went about, who sent him about. It's the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Now, curiously, in Luke 4, verse 1, he goes with the Spirit into the wilderness to spend 40 days in fasting and prayer under the instruction, please, of the Holy Spirit. So there are times of prayer that the Spirit of God will lead you to have. Don't go and do 40 days if he didn't send you to do it. You will die for nothing. Can we close that bracket? So in Luke 4, verse 14, now after his time of prayer where Satan came to tempt him, the Bible says Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, everywhere, because when someone is clothed with the power of the Spirit, I can tell you it's just a matter of time. People will realize it. People will start speaking about it. You don't need to make your own advertising. Allow the Spirit of God to advertise you. You don't need to like or to have likes. Leave all that. You can have zero like, but have an impact that is resounding by the power of the Spirit of the Lord. Can I continue? So we can see that Jesus was clothed with power. And in Luke 4, a bit further, verse 18, he goes to the synagogue. He explains what happened to him. He says, this happened to me. I am clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit because something happened. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, came upon me because he has anointed me. He gave me the anointing just as he wants to give it to you as you hear me this morning. He has anointed me to proclaim good news, to evangelize, to proclaim good news, to proclaim the good news of the reign of God, not only proclaim 
and please demonstrate also, because if we speak without demonstrating, there's a problem. He who makes me able to speak is the Holy Spirit. He who makes me able to demonstrate is also called the Holy Spirit. But in his particularity, in his dimension of the Spirit of the Lord, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. There's somebody, the Lord is saying this morning, someone who is depressive, chronically. Today is your day of release. I don't know where you are, but today, depression and you are divorcing forever. It's over. The contract, the lease with that spirit, you had opened the door following a tragedy and since you've remained in sadness and you opened the door to a spirit of sadness, today you realize that as you go home that it's over, the word has come forth, it's over, every form of depression has left because today depression is replaced by dominion of the spirit of the Lord, he sent me to proclaim deliverance to the captives, to proclaim the recovery of sight to the blind. He sent me to set all prisoners free. Who can dare to set free those who are in spiritual prisons, in pits, in all sorts of waters, in trees, on, under the earth? How can you go and bring somebody's marriage out, somebody's health out when they were buried? How can you bring out their children, their husband, their wives? How can you bring forth their employment, their job? Who can do it? It's impossible to to men, but to God it is possible. Who does it? It is the Spirit of the Lord. My friend, you must desire Him. My sister, you must desire Him. Do you desire God? He says to proclaim a year of grace. It means when the Spirit of the God, the Lord manifests in your life, you can say to somebody, today your suffering is over. That's it. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what God will do with many of you today. Today, we are the 8th of August, 2021. We are the, the second Sunday of the month of August. You will remember that today you encountered him. Can we continue, my brother? Say with me the spirit of the Lord. How does he operate? It is he who fills you with power. He fills you, he clothes you with power. The spirit of the Lord fills you with power. And when he fills you with this power that comes from above, this is why Jesus said before leaving, when that power comes, it will give you authority. Many of us, you prayed, you cast out, but you're saying, well, the pastor said to cast out, so I cast out and I prayed, but pastor, it's not working. I don't understand. Stand by the blood of Jesus that was shed on the blood of Cal at the cross of Calvary. Spirit, get out! And the Spirit says, "I'm not coming out." Is it the blood that is not working? No, my brother. My brother, the blood is working. It has no problem. The problem is authority. The problem is power. Because before you can speak to some mountains, you need to have a level of power that is higher. And power comes from only one: the Spirit of the Lord. He will fill someone to. Today, the quality of your amen is troubling me right now. The spirit of the Lord, the pastor spoke of the anointing. It's the anointing that will release, that will be released on the church today. He will release it not on pastors, but those who believe. On those who believed, he will release the anointing. Who will do it? The Spirit of the Lord. Can you acclaim him like someone who believes? The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of Lordship. The Spirit of Dominion. Are you acclaiming him? Are you acclaiming? As you acclaim the Spirit, you honor the Spirit. You acknowledge the Spirit. The Spirit of Lordship. Amen. Please have a seat. It's not over, my brother. We are going somewhere. We are going into an encounter with the glorious Holy Spirit like never before, like you never experienced him before. Someone's eyes will open today. Some ears will start opening today as I speak. Oh, I don't prophesy. You will prophesy today. Who am I speaking to? Give an amen. It is he 
who confers authority, the right to command and to be obeyed. So far you were taught. You said I've received the power to command and to be obeyed. I hear many people say I've received the power of commanding and being obeyed, but it's not working. Yes, it's not working because the person who makes you able to command is not yourself. It's not the power of your voice. It's not the number of hours of prayer you made. All that can help, but yet there is only one person who comes with his ministry who is called the glorious Holy Spirit. And when he clothes you with power, when you speak, Speak even quietly in the name of Jesus. Something happens. It's not the voice tone. It's not the voice tone. No, it's the mandate of authority that is given by the Spirit of the Lord. My brother, you must love him. Have you met him? Yes, but your day of encounter is today. It is today. It is today. The Spirit of the Lord, He clothes you with the power from above. And when that power comes, the power from above makes you able to operate in miracles, to operate in wonders. He will make you a sign, a sign in your generation. You wanted to shine, not without Him. He said, not without me, but with me, I'll make you a subject of wonder, a subject of praise. But it's not because you said amen. It's because the Spirit of the Lord comes to clothe you with power. Jesus experienced the same thing. You can only do what Jesus did. As He is, so are we. As He did, so are we doing. We follow the method of Jesus. We follow the pathway of Jesus Christ. Can someone give me a good amen? He operates upon you. He makes you able to operate without an effort naturally in the supernatural. In the supernatural, the supernatural becomes natural. Miracles become natural. Miracles are no longer an exception. Signs and wonders are no longer an exception. Of course, he gives special grace to some, fair enough. But the truth of the matter is that you must have something. Some miracles must start being your portion. No, it's not for pastors, it's not for apostles, it's not for evangelists. It's for people who believe, for those who believe. It is for those who believed. Oh, church, we were told we are waiting for the pastor for everything. We are waiting the prophets for everything. No, we must wait on you too because they shine, but you too must shine in your generation in the midst of darkness. You've been born again for a week. Yes, you also have the agenda of God to be filled, to be clothed with the Spirit of the Lord. He makes you able. Do you know why people were following Jesus? Do you know why people were often following Jesus? People will come to church and the church will go to them because of that. Luke 5 verse 15, the Bible tells us that the news about Jesus spread all the more. Luke 5, that reports went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear. He did. He wasn't going around saying, I'm doing a, com, a communication campaign. Come, come. No, no. It's the spirit that drew them, because when a building is on fire, whether you want it or not, it attracts attention. When a building is on fire, people come. What's happening? What's happening? On the day of Pentecost, there was not a Facebook, a YouTube campaign. There were no posters made. But the multitude came on the day of Pentecost. Why? Because the Holy Spirit said, let me do it. You have too much technology. It's not bad, but let me do it now. I am God. I know how to draw men to me. I know how to transform them. I'm trying to tell you that, you know what? We must learn to depend on the Spirit. We must learn to depend on the Spirit. The Bible says of him that the report went around concerning him all the more and great multitudes came firstly to hear to hear his word and to and to be healed by him of their infirmities why because he carried something when he was clothed with the power of the holy spirit the holy spirit started operating miracles when we speak of miracles we speak of every supernatural work work that engages the power of God. When we speak of miracles, we speak of wonders. It's another dimension of miracles. We speak of signs. It's another category of miracles. Can someone say amen? But what matters to me is that your life should become a subject of testimony for the Spirit of God to start operating miracles through you. You don't always need to call the pastor. No, you are a carrier of the presence of God, of the Spirit, of the anointing, of the power of God to heal others, to help others 
others in hospitals, streets, homes, cities. God must go through you. Say amen to that. Luke chapter 16, rather Luke chapter 6 verse 17. And he came down with them and stood on the level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people. You see multitudes of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him, to hear the word like this morning and be healed of their diseases and be healed. People are sick. People are sick. Technology has never been so advanced, and yet there are so many new pathologies, so many new threats, health crises, so many dangers. There are so many threats. People are sick, and God does not like sickness. He sacrificed his son because he doesn't like sickness. But it's not only the sick who have challenges. There's malnourishment. There is poverty. There are so many things, so many ills, so many catastrophes on earth. God doesn't like it, but God is looking for men and women through whom he will manifest himself to answer the needs of men of your generation. You are called to serve God in your generation. And for that, you can't do it by yourself. You need to be clothed with power. You need to be filled with the power from on high. Because the pastor cannot do everything. But there are things the Spirit will do with you. There may be demons you may not be able to cast out. But there are demons you'll be able to cast out. You may not be able to heal all sicknesses. But some sicknesses will know you. Will learn to discover you if I'm speaking to you. You give me a believing amen. Leave your title as a pastor aside of pastor, uh, a pastor assistant, whatever. God doesn't care. I don't care. What matters is the spirit of the Lordship that anoints you, that clothes you with power, my friend. Stop being insecure. There's no title in matters of the spirit. Did Jesus have a title? Did he have a title? But when the spirit called, he said he is. They said he is the Christ. People started calling him daddy. Jesus said, my children, you are 30, I'm your child. The spirit of the Lord, when you are clothed with power. He said, I call you children. Yes, Jesus was speaking to a man like Peter. I'm your big brother, you know. Yes, but you're my daddy, you're my daddy. That's authority that comes with the Spirit. Respect me, respect me. I'm your big brother. I'm your pastor. No, my brother, calm down. In the Spirit of God, there's no title. First and foremost, there is the grace to receive the power that comes from on high. If you're listening and following, say amen. So Jesus manifested a life of power that no sickness could resist. The anointing was so great in his life that he had dominion over everything. Say amen. And before he went back to the Father, there's so much to say. Before he went back to the Father in Luke 24, verse 49, you know that passage, my friend, you know it. He was right there. Jesus was risen. And Jesus now said, Behold, it's time for me to go in Luke. He said, I'm leaving. What? You're not leaving. No, 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 no. Calm down. Calm down. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. The father had promised. The father had promised that he would come just for you. It's the greatest gift the father gave you. First he gives his son and then he gives his spirit. Wow. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. For the Lord is good. Put the verse back on, please. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But you, no, no, no. We're going to evangelize. We're going to pray for the sick. No, 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 no. Tarry in the city. No, no, wait, wait, wait. The world is spiritual. I know you're excited. In the name of Jesus, you want to say in the name of Jesus? No, 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 no. That's not how it works. The spiritual world realm doesn't know you, doesn't recognize you. You need a stamp. You need a seal that comes from you. So he says, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued, equipped, clothed with power from on high. And when the power from on high comes, my friends, I promise that you will not recognize yourselves. You will be transformed. But who will transform you? The power from on high. It comes through a person who is called the Holy Spirit. There must be an encounter between you and him. I met him. You must meet him. Each person must meet him. Each 
and everyone must meet him. Can you say amen? Say the power from above with me. I heard a preacher who said something that touched me and that I remembered. He said the greatest need of any person who is not yet saved to any person who is lost, it's to meet Jesus that they may be saved. The greatest need of a person who is unsaved is to be saved, to meet Jesus. The greatest need now of a person who is saved, who received Jesus Christ, who is born of the kingdom, their need, their greatest need is to be transformed, to be transformed, to become mature, to become mature, to become balanced in the Lord. But the greatest need of a person who is transformed is to be equipped, clothed with power. And the greatest need of a person who is clothed with power is character and humility, humility. Because without that, you will get lost. Did you get me? So you are already born again. You love Jesus, but you can't operate like Jesus. That's why Jesus is coming to meet with you today by the Holy Spirit. And he will meet you at the point of your need. He will meet you where you are crying out. Because among you, among us, some are tired. They are tired of this Christian life. They are tired of this Christian life. Welcome to the kingdom means nothing to me anymore. My life is tasteless. I don't understand. My business is stuck. My health is bad. My my family, my business, my home, nothing is making progresses. I'm tormented, oppressed, but this is not what they told me of the Christian life. I expected more. I didn't get what I expected and I don't even see God the way I should. I don't experience God how I should. I said amen many times. I sowed seeds, but I see no transformation. It's because something is missing. You miss. You lack power to on to submit the world of darkness under you to submit circumstances. Jesus said, "I've given you power to walk over serpents, scorpions, and all the power of the enemy." But I do believe. Yet I don't experience this. It's normal. The person who is meant to make you experience that word is the Holy Spirit. But in his operation, his manifestation as the Spirit of Lordship, and he has come to meet with you today. He has come to download into you to equip you my brother you must say amen so before he went back to the father mercy before he returned to the father in mark 16 verse 15 you know the word jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned and these signs and jesus says beloved i'm not sending you just like that calm down okay i'm telling you that something will go with you i'm sending you but i'm not sending you empty-handed okay put the verse back on he says and these signs and these signs say it with me and these signs say it with me and these signs and these signs will follow those who believe who believe he's speaking of you if he's speaking of you say amen leave that my brother not pastor assistant pastor you were born again yesterday this is the word for you and these signs will follow you say with me signs and miracles say with me he's speaking about me the signs that will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons from today that grace comes upon you in my name they will speak with new tongues your tongues will improve increase from today even your speaking in tongues will evolve from today yesterday you were Coca Coca Cola Coca Cola. Now you're going to Rebo Shete Rebo Secretary and the Rebosa. There is so much to say. There is so much to say. But even your speaking in tongues will evolve. Your capacity, your spiritual capacity will be increased. It will increase. Amen. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Meaning, I was vaccinated by for by COVID. What does it mean? When I'm conscious that the spirit of the Lord is upon me, my brother, I'll take the vaccine. Give me the vaccine. No problem. But you know what? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. So come in. If you had another mission, but the mission to to look after COVID, you will die in my body. You will die. The prophecy, the prophecy, the prophecy. Who prophesied? Jesus prophesied. Jesus prophesied. 
This is not just any prophet. God, who comes from heaven to earth, says, if they drink anything deadly, a poison, it will by no means hurt them. No effects. I walk with the prophecy of Jesus for my life. Am I speaking to someone? So I'm not for vaccine or against the vaccine. I am for the prophecy. If by any chance something goes into my body and is bad, it will die. It won't harm me. If a serpent bites me like bites me like bone, I'll just say, oops, oops. Oh, and then I'll shake it off and they'll say, this man is a god. Yes, because the spirit of lordship is upon me. Is God speaking to somebody this morning? Is God speaking to somebody this morning? So can we continue with the prophecy? Do you want to experience the miraculous? Say amen. They will take up serpents from today. Every satanic serpent that used to pursue you, bite you, that used to go into your stomach, that used to walk in your back by the power of the Spirit of the Lord, they leave you. It's not tomorrow, it's right now. We will pray later on. We will not even pray for long. Because you yourself are going to pray, being closed by the Spirit. You know when the Spirit of the Lord anoints you. When the Spirit of the Lord took over Gideon, he who felt as last of his family, last of his home, last of the last, he was in defeat. The Spirit said, the, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And the Bible then says, Gideon was clothed with the Spirit of the Lord. And with the Spirit of the Lord, he went to war with a little group of soldiers and they massacred millions, millions of people. That will be your portion, beloved. In my family, there are enemies in my family. All those enemies, the dominion, the power you are clothed with this morning, which you will taste in a few moments, they themselves will say, ah, daughter, I don't recognize you, my son. Ah, it looks like you've changed. You'll say, mama, I'm here. I'm the same person, but something has changed. I can confirm. I walk in the prophecy of Jesus Christ. Say amen. And he says, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This prophecy is for you. This word is for you. Wake up, my brother. Wake up, my sister. I didn't say to stand up. I said to wake up. You've been dependent on others for so long. Dependent on people. No. God, the God who called me this morning, wants to anoint you and give you the power to go and heal the sick in hospitals as you are led of the Spirit. Don't do anything without Him, but with Him, you will do exploit. He comes to make you shine in the midst of darkness. Darkness will know you've received something. It's not, oh, I grew up in wisdom, I grew up... No, 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 that's good. You leave all that now. Go into the encounter. Go into the encounter. Am I speaking to someone? Verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up in heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. It was over for him. Now he waits on you. When someone sits, he's come to a time of rest. When he sits down, he says, Father, I've finished the job. The Spirit is with them now. The Spirit as he was with me is now with them. So I sit by your right hand. A man from heaven, seeing how he functioned with the Spirit of the Lord. And now the Bible tells us in verse 20, and they went out and preached everywhere. In all France, in all Europe, in the Caribbean, in Africa, in America, in Asia, they went out and preached of Jesus everywhere. They went to announce Jesus, speak of Jesus everywhere, say everywhere with me. ICC will go everywhere by the grace of God. You don't want us? We are led by the Spirit of the Lord and we will go everywhere. And this is what happened. The Lord was working with them and confirming the word for the accompanying signs. Say with me, the accompanying signs and miracles. The miracles, the signs accompanying. The Lord said, tell them about the miracles because I'm about to cause my glory to explode and I want to use them to operate the miraculous. Say with me, miracles. Pastor, why is it that God wants to 
make miracles so much through me. I'm nothing. I don't know anything. I'm not a pastor. I don't even aspire to be a pastor. But have you believed? So you are qualified to operate in the miraculous. Why? Just a few examples and then we will pray. Say with me, we are going to pray. Do you want to pray, my brother? We are going to pray. Why does God want miracles, wonders to be accomplished by the Holy Spirit who is in you? Why? Number one, because by miracles and wonders and signs, Jesus wants to show the entire world that he is alive. Jesus was crucified. He was buried. And he is risen. And that is the good news of the gospel. The problem is that sometimes when we say reason, people don't quite understand. So we need to tell them ra reason. It means he's no longer dead. Reason, it means he is alive. He is alive. In spirit, Jesus the Christ is alive and well. Jesus is tired, you see, because through you, people don't know he's alive. And people don't even believe he's alive. Some people some people don't believe if they've not seen. Some people believe when they hear the word. But some people don't believe without a demonstration that Jesus is alive. Say it with me, Jesus is alive. And you are speaking and speaking, but they don't believe Jesus is alive. He says, I must show them I'm alive. Behold, I am with you. Always, even to the end of the world, Jesus said, but they do not believe. They will start believing because through miracles, he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yesterday, he was called the miracle worker, the one who does all things wonderfully. I meditated. He made me to meditate on all the miracles. I said, Lord, I was not so aware of you being a miracle worker. For you uh, operating miracles, it was like eating bread, drinking water. Everywhere he went, it was like, woman, lift your hand, you're healed. And then he steps, he moves on. What's the problem with you? Okay, son of David, have mercy. He says, what do you want? Have sight? Okay, get your sight. Oh, son of David, what is it? What do you want? Spirit of dumbness, go! And the spirit goes. Who is that? The, the, the widow of nine? Woman, why are you crying? Mommy, don't cry, don't cry. Stop the burial, stop the, stop the coffin. Hey, what is happening? The crowd is wondering what is happening. Young man, get up, I tell you. Mommy, here you go. Here's your son. And then he steps on, he moves on. Jesus of Nazareth, wow! What, how is this guy doing this? Wow, as, he doing, as he's doing that, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all the, the religious were like, gosh, it's like he's drinking water. He, he's not normal. When you have the spirit of lordship, you are no longer normal. Lazarus is dead. He's, he says, okay, let's go. He's smelling already. Okay, good. He's smelling. That's even better for me. Let's go. There's no more hope. Oh, when there's no hope, that's when I show up. Incurable disease. When there's no healing possible, I can intervene. He takes you to the end of yourself so that he can manifest his glory. And then he gets there and he's like, where did you put him? Oh, Lord, he's smelling. No worries. Take me there. Take me there. But Lord, 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 oh, calm down. So that's where he sees everybody is crying. He says, okay, me too, I cry one tear. He was full of compassion. And then he said, oh, Satan has troubled people here. Open the tomb. Oh, Lord, open the tomb. Lazarus, come forth. Loose him and let him go. Jesus of Nazareth. Wow. Jesus of Nazareth. But come on, come on, come on. He must be stopped. One day they were so shocked. They were like, no, that guy, that Jesus. The Bible said they came to make him king because they're like, okay, become king. We kick out Caesar, Herod, you're the king. He went to hide. He said, are you crazy? The spirit of the Lord. Jesus is the same and he is alive. What he did yesterday, he can do today. What he did yesterday, he wants everybody to know through you. Am I speaking to someone? He wants people to know through you that he's alive, that he's not dead, that death could not hold him. He will prove it by the miracles through you from now on. If I'm speaking to you, give me a better amen. Why? 
Does he absolutely want to manifest miracles by his spirit through me? Because miracles manifest his glory. And since we are speaking of the manifestation of his glory in the midst of darkness, it won't happen without miracles. Can you say amen? John 2, 11, this is the beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. You see, there's a connection between the manifestation of glory and the life of miracles. You must operate in miracles you must operate in the miraculous it's your day it's your hour it's the season for you it is the season there are too many too many demons tormenting people around you those who tormented you will be sacked today they won't only be sacked today you are free you are released but you are also equipped today and you become a chaser of darkness today today you receive many graces one the grace to be a source of blessing unto others but firstly you are personally delivered you are healed you are equipped and it is your portion it is your story it is your testimony am i speaking to you can i hear an amen from you why did jesus manifest miracles in our midst why does he want to do it through you It's because through miracles, through wonders, he manifests his love. He manifests his compassion. God is merciful for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. His mercy is everlasting. His compassions are never come to an end. He's full of compassion. And the reason why he does all that, it's because he's full of compassion. He wants people to know he's compassionate. You know, today people see God as if he enjoyed people's suffering. I've been sick for a long time. Does it not turn? you oh god i've been suffering for so long and god look at the world that is suffering and god says but i do have answers i have my people i've seated but the people i want to use don't believe me and they operate in the carnal in motivation self-development it doesn't work they put the spirit aside but i jesus have done everything by the spirit and i committed you to the hands of the spirit for you to operate exactly as i did i said those who believe in me will do even greater work because I return to the Father and I send you the Spirit. But now I must be multiplied. God has an encounter with you today. He has an encounter with you today. Matthew 14, verse 14, and when Jesus went out of the boat, he saw a large crowd. He had compassion for them. The Lord Jesus wants to show the world that he's a God of compassion. Say amen. He's not insensitive to pain. He's not insensitive to blockade, to the instability, the instability you experience he is not insensitive to failure to the distress and the pain of your soul no he is sensitive and he wants to confirm he is sensitive in matthew 14 14 he had compassion for the crowd for you for people around you you first and he wants to heal and he wants to deliver and he wants to restore come on to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest he was sincere when he said it But the problem is that the vessels, the instruments from whom he wants to bless are blocked. They have an issue with unbelief. They don't believe God can use them. They believe God can use the pastor, but not them. They look to their age and say, I'm but 13. Can God use a 13-year-old child to operate in the miraculous? But look at what God did with Jeremiah, with Daniel, with many others. God is a God who uses all those who are available. Give him a vessel and he will take that vessel and manifest his glory he wants to heal relieve restore transform people's lives through you you don't have a title but it's not the title that makes the difference he makes the difference he wants to go through someone he wants to go through the icc family he wants to communicate grace to this world in suffering and pain he says i am merciful listen to me yes don't tell them jesus loves you Jesus loves you and he delivers you. Jesus loves you and heals you. And God will now anoint you with his spirit to make you able to lay hands on the sick, to speak to diseases, to cast out demons. When you walk in that dimension, you see, can you say amen? Because it will be your portion. Enough is enough. People are oppressed by all sorts of sicknesses and infirmities. God has an answer. It's his church, his people, his, the people of his pasture. God has an answer. You are the sound of my voice. God is merciful and he wants to manifest that mercy. The widow of Nain that 
widow, that old woman was crying. God wanted to comfort him. God used Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ. Now Jesus wants to comfort the world. He wants to go through you to bring the dead back to life. Death is not fatality. Some dead can come back to life through the power of the Spirit of the Lord who anoints you with strength. Do you understand what God is saying to you this morning? Why does he want to manifest a life of miracles? My friends, no matter what the level you've reached in your knowledge of the world, it matters not. Today, God will use every available vessel. If you are serving in security, even you yourselves get ready. Don't be distracted. You who are online chatting, at some point I said no more chat. No more chatting online. Everybody must get ready to receive the download of power. The power from online will fall in a few moments i will say stop writing in the chat he who is still chatting will have failed will have gone by would have missed the manifestation of the spirit it's despising god when i say stop chatting you who are online even the moderator stop chatting to receive you can't receive the spirit of god and be distracted no you receive the spirit you are connected you are sensitive can we continue because i need to learn why does the lord want to manifest miracles signs and wonders through your life it's because he wants to see people glorify him he wants to see people giving him the glory can somebody say amen when he walked into jerusalem in luke 19 verse 37 the bible says then as he was drawing near to the descent of the mount of olives the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice like you this morning our pastor said this is the month of joy my brother he was speaking of this prophecy that will come to pass for you they began to rejoice and praise god with a loud voice why were they praising god for all the mighty works they had seen they were praising god why not for the word only but for the word that was accompanied followed with signs and miracles people need to see miracles miracles still glorify god can you say amen in luke 7 that we saw earlier the widow of nine in verse 15 when he so when he who was dead sat up and began to speak and he presented him to his mother and in luke 7 verse 16 they were all filled with oh they were thinking how is it possible that guy is strange they were glorifying god they were glorifying god from today through your life they will glorify god am i speaking to you from today because of your life they will glorify god they will say glory be to god glory be to god glory be to god glory be to god give god the glory can someone say amen why is it that God wants to accomplish miracles? I told you I'm coming to my last point. There are other points, but I will stop here. It's because there are people who cannot believe unless they see, okay? So you must stop condemning people. I used to be in the category of those who, who condemn those who don't believe. Yes, some believe with the word. When you read the book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit, the Acts of Apostles, many believed just by listening to the word. But there were many cases also where people needed to see. Can we continue? Because miracles, say miracles with me. Miracles provoke massive conversion. Miracles cause abundance, harvest of souls to Christ. Some believe with miracles. Some believe without miracles. God is a God of diversity. And God likes miracles. If he didn't like miracles, why did Jesus make so many miracles? He was constantly in the miraculous, in, in, the, in a natural way. In the book of Luke, Jesus was invited to eat with a Pharisee. And when he came there to eat, you don't need to put the verse on the screen. The Bible said there was a man in front of him whose hand was dry. Apparently, is that sickness where you, you swell. 
you keep swelling. So he saw a guy. The guy hadn't asked for anything. The guy was just at the table with the Pharisees in Luke 14. And when he saw that man, he was filled with compassion. He said, can someone do something good, a miracle on, Sab on the Sabbath? As always, the guys were so in awe of Jesus the Christ. They didn't know how to calm him. They were like, okay, he's going to do miracles everywhere. And so he healed that man instantly. That man had not asked for healing. He was just there. But he saw compassion take over. God wants to fill your heart with compassion. And through you, he wants to manifest his compassion. And you say, man. There are people who don't believe. The Bible says in John 20, verse 30, and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these, but, but these are written. These are written. What things? The miracles, the miracles, the signs, the wonders he accomplished were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. He wants to manifest for you who are converted for a week even. I don't mind. What God sees is a heart that is boiling, a heart that is desiring to manifest the glory of Christ, a heart that is available to him. He will take every vessel. Can we continue to come to the place where we end? But these things are written that you may believe that the world must believe through miracles. Some will believe with the world only, but some will believe through miracles. In John 6, verse 13, when Jesus multiplied bread and fish, in John 6, in John 6, verse 13 and 14, verse 14 says, then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. They saw the miracle, the sign, and they said, this one is truly the Son of God. Your Jesus is truly alive. Your Jesus is alive. And he wants you to be a spokesperson, a witness, but there is no witness when you are not clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. It is he who the Father and Jesus the Christ sent. There is no miracle. There was a church called Lida, in a city called Lida. In that church, there were not many believers, not many people who came to church, but people were fighting to evangelize some brothers in the city of Lida. The Bible tells us in Acts 9 from verse 32, now it came to pass as Peter went through all parts of the country that he also came down to the saints who dwelt, who dwelt in Lida. It's like Paris if you want, all right? There he found a certain man named Aeneas who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. Eight years. Everyone in the city knew that guy was rotten. He couldn't walk sick for eight years. Aeneas, he said, I can't walk. Peter comes to the city. The Bible tells us that when Peter entered the city, he goes to Aeneas and says, Jesus Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose immediately. Peter, what are you doing? That Peter did not have certifications. He, he was not well educated. Yes, but he shook lives. He, he shook the world. Say amen. So here again, I must tell you that when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, your competency is not, your basic competency is not even in the in, in, in consideration. We look to the works, the spirit of lordship. That guy is a sinner. Yes, he's a sinner, but he is now clothed with the power from on high. Do you hear me, brother? The power from on high gives you power i'm a director yes but with the power from on high your level changes you are no longer just that i'm a manager no but with the power from on high i am a nurse no but with the power from on high it's not the same equation you are good i am good but i am above you because i have the power from on high Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. He baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Can someone say amen? Now what matters to me in that story is that in verse 35, as the church was not really filled, they were fighting, they were trying to, to get people, they loved God. But then the Bible tells us, so all who dwelt in Lida and Sharon saw him 
they saw the miracle and they all turned to the Lord when they saw the miracle. My brother, a few more moments. Are you ready to receive the download of power? Every connected church, be ready to receive the download of power. You will receive power. That of the Holy Spirit. Can I continue because I must finish? Just after that, after Lida, Peter went to Joppa, Joppa, and there too there was a little church. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. There was another church in Act 9, verse 40. Peter reached a little city called Joppa. In Joppa, there was a woman called Tabitha who had died. You see, sometimes good Christians can die prematurely because the spirit of death can take someone for many reasons. But when the spirit of death has taken someone, he who has the spirit of lordship is not discouraged they said peter tabitha is dead she was very generous the whole city everybody was like peter 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 is like okay the spirit of the lord is upon me i used to be a sinner but i have changed profession i have become a mighty soul winner and i am anointed with the holy spirit with the spirit of lordship who has made me powerful this is what he will do for you also today can you say amen so Peter goes into Tabitha's room. He lies upon her. He brings all out. He goes on his knees. He prays. He turns. He turns to her and he says, Tabitha, arise. He didn't have to say, in the name of Jesus, first I cast out the spirit of death, then I rebuke the spirit of Satan, then I rebuke, no, no, no. He was led by the spirit. Here the spirit of the Lord tells him, speak, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Wow. Tabitha was risen by the power of God, the power of God, the power of God. And in verse 42, that's where I'm going. And it became known throughout all, throughout all Joppa. The church of Joppa existed before, but was not really attracting people because they lacked signs and miracles. It, would, it became known throughout all Joppa. And many believed on the Lord because of miracles. Do so you understand the grace God wants to bestow you? It's to win the world for you, to win your generation for you. Is there someone who is receiving this word? Here, my brother, everyone is qualified. There's no one who is not qualified. Every single person is qualified. From the pastor to the most simple sheep to the last person born again today everybody is qualified to receive the power from on high for this promise was made unto all those who believed not unto all those who have titles but unto all those who believed can I continue can I continue there's a man who hesitated as many in the world you see you speak to people soul of Tarsus called Paul was on a mission he was on an evangelism mission for to conquer his generation and he meets a man called Elimas, someone who is next to the proconsul, a man of political authority and the proconsul was wandering between Jesus Christ and witchcraft, he was hesitating between Jesus Christ and magic and Elimas was troubling him, was making incantation and as Paul was speaking of Christ to the Proconsul Elimas was opposing. We don't know how he opposed. We don't know if it was uh, opposition, whatever he was doing. But the Bible says in Acts 13, verse 8, but Elimas, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, we stood them seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul had the normal reaction of someone who is filled with the Holy Spirit. So Saul, who also is called Paul, the Bible tells you, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit that filled him manifests in this circumstance, dominion, authority, power, 
Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, Oh, fool of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? He spoke an academic French there, right? He spoke a very sophisticated English, a very modern language. He could have simply said, get out. He didn't do that. He went through a whole sentence. And now he said, enough. And indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you. And you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. God wants to save you. But because you don't want to listen to me, from today you are blind. Elimas goes, what's happening? He can't see anything anymore. The Bible says that the proconsul said, wow, demonstration of power. God wants to do it through you. God wants to do it through you. There are too many wizards, too many magicians. There are too many amateurs. They call them big sorcerers. No, the spirit of dominion, when he anoints you with the power from on high, my brother, even you will say, what's happening to me? How am I standing against such people? This is what will happen to you. Am I speaking to you? If so, say amen. But what I like is verse 12. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished by the teaching at the teaching of the Lord. He said, no, I choose this Jesus. I choose. I hesitated between magics and, and witchcraft and the gospel, but I'm amazed at seeing the demonstration of power, the power from above. But someone must manifest it, and that person is you. Even the quality of your amen is making me think twice. But I know one thing, God is not a liar when he sends his word. What his mouth declares, his hand will accomplish. So if there's only one person here or elsewhere, it's enough. It means you are the one who believed. If I'm speaking to you, can I hear an amen? The last thing one of the conditions, one of the major conditions for you to live in the miraculous, for you to become a subject of the miraculous and for God to operate the miraculous for you, one of the things you need to know is that you must always turn eyes to Jesus. Because people don't come to church to see Pastor Castanu, they don't connect to see Pastor Ivan, they logically connect to see Jesus. See, man, the Greeks came to see Peter they came to see the disciples they said master in john 12 verse 20 never forget that they said we would like to see jesus we would like to see jesus we don't want to see the pastor we don't want to see the pastor's wife we don't want to see the lights we don't want to see the seats we don't want to see all the beauty all that is good it's decoration but it means nothing if there's no power of God, it means nothing, absolutely nothing. I'd rather be in a warehouse where the power of God manifests and men are touched and saved than to be in a great building where everything is beautiful, but there's no impact, no changed life. No, Jesus is the miracle worker. Jesus is full of compassion. Jesus is interested by people's suffering. Jesus wants to heal, deliver, save, restore. But the key is that we must draw people to Jesus. All that we do is good. Technology, the media is good, but it must be to serve Jesus and Jesus alone not for the glory of a man a pastor a denomination no we want to see Jesus we want to see Jesus Jesus is all we want don't glorify the pastor leave us all we want is Jesus we want Jesus Jesus the Messiah Jesus the Christ is the one we want stop all the rest just take me to Jesus I want Jesus give me Jesus or I die I want Jesus the Christ bring people to to Jesus. He is the one who is to be glorified. God lifted him. He is lifted up and sitting at the right hand of the Father. It's not the pastor who is elevated. Jesus is the one. Lift up Jesus. Stop all that. Bring the light on Jesus alone. If you understand, say amen. The miraculous is for 
is not for those who want to receive glory. But no, Lord, not to me, but to you give glory. Sometimes we can say it without our hearts. We say to you the glory, but to me too. No, no, no. You we must take people to Jesus in Mark 6, verse 53. After having gone through, when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesareth and then go there. And when they came out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him. Say with me, the people. The people recognized him immediately. People recognize Jesus. They don't want to recognize pastors or men of God, no matter how anointed they are. Leave the man of God alone and seek Jesus. They recognize Jesus. They run through that whole surrounding region and began bringing to carry about on beds those who were sick and wherever they had they heard he was wherever he entered into villages cities or the country they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment why because they wanted to see jesus who do you come to church to see who do you seek by coming online who do you want to impress people want jesus we want jesus don't give us anything else i don't want anything else pastor castell went so He's, a, he's just a man who is here and will go. People want to see Jesus, the immortal, only God, only wise God, who lives forever. Give people, give Jesus to people. It's Jesus we want. Can you say amen? So, on the day of Pentecost, when Jesus left, he said in Acts 1.8, you will receive power, that of the Holy Spirit coming upon you and you will be my witnesses but he said no one can be a witness without the power the power of the spirit the power of the holy spirit so in closing before we take time to pray it is written 10 days later 10 days later when the day of the pentecost had fully come say with me on the day of pentecost it is today for someone it is a repeat, a new season. Today I want to live a Pentecost. What is Pentecost? It's the encounter. It's the encounter with the power from on high, the power of the Holy Spirit. They were all with one accord in one place. Are we together in one place today? Are we in the same place with the connected churches also? So today we are connected all together in one place. If you are at home, if you're not in church, it's a bit sad. If you are on holidays, good for you. Why? Because you see, Jesus had given an alert of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When he gave the alert, there were 500. But on the day of Pentecost, somewhere away at the supermarket, etc. But he, Jesus told 500 people. But on the day of Pentecost, there were only 120. Where were the others? We don't know. Some had gone on holidays. Good for them. Did God wait for the 500 to be back in the upper room? No. God works with those who are present. And because you are present, you are blessed. Because you are present, you are the right person. If you are following me, say amen. Because you are here, you are qualified. So the Bible says they were together, 120. I don't know how many we are, but we are more than 120. No matter what, we are together in one place. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They were seated. Acts 2 verse 1 to 3. Come as you are today. They were seated. You are seated also because you are in the prophecy. Can I continue? They were seated. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. It's important for you to understand this. There were 120, there were 12 apostles, 12 leaders. The pastors, the leaders, the, the leaders were 12. But there were therefore 108 others. We don't know if they were apostles. 12 apostles, 120, okay, it means there's 108 others, yes or no? So there were another 108 who had no title. And then you hear the power, and then you're like saying the power of God will fall on only the apostles. No, 120. 
tongues as of fire. So the fire that is coming down in a few moments, that fire that is coming, he took the apostles, the pastors, but also the 108. So if you are not a pastor or an assistant pastor, you believed you are in the category. The fire will come down. The fire came upon each and every one of them. The instrument players, the worshippers, the singers, everybody. Not everybody might manifest, but I guarantee you, you are receiving fire today. And when the fire comes, not everybody manifests it in the same way, but somebody will manifest fire. Can someone say amen? And sat upon each of them. So listen to me, my brother, my sister. We all are entitled to the, the covering of power. He said the harvest is great and there are few workers. Today's harvest is even greater than that of yesterday, and there are still few workers. And today he's looking for those workers. Can he count on you today? Are you available? Are you ready? Are you sincere? So remain seated and bow your head where you are. Start praying in tongues if you really want to receive fire. Don't forget, you need to come to see Jesus. You need to come to see Jesus. We are in your presence. Let it rain. Your fire, Lord. Let it fall on me. We are in your presence. Let it rain. Oh, let your rain pour on us. Your rain. Your rain. Your rain. Your rain. Your rain. On us. We are in your presence, Lord. Let it rain. Pour your rain. Let it fall. 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 Let it fall, Let it fall Pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Let your fire fall. He wants to download, he wants to pour. We are in your presence. Spirit of promise. Spirit of God. Your fire, let it fall on us. My life, my life, we are in your presence. Let it rain. Get ready to receive the Spirit. We are in your presence. Are you connected? Avoid every distraction now. Concentrate on Christ Jesus. He has sent the Holy Spirit. We are, we are in His presence. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. He baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The power of God, the power of the Spirit will come in a few moments. It starts manifesting in somebody's heart, someone who thirsts. We are, we are in your presence. The power of God is about to fall. We are, we are, we are in your presence. The power of the Holy Spirit. He baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. One more time. We are in your presence. Pastor, assistant pastor, brother, sister, leader. Open the floodgates. In abundance. And cause your rain to fall on us. Abba, we are. Open the floodgates. 
Open heavens, open heavens, open heavens. Reke sere bo 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 kataraba. Let your fire fall, fall on our lives. Open the floodgates. This is the accomplishment of the promise. In the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters will prophesy. Open the floodgate. This is the time of an encounter with your God. This is the time of an encounter to be clothed with power. Your fire, your fire, open the floodgates. Open the floodgates of heaven. Open your floodgates. The heavens are open, my brother. The heavens are open. Fe Let your fire fall. Open the floodgates. And let your rain of fire fall upon our lives. Baba. The heavens are open. The heavens are open. Upon each and every one of the disciples, upon every man, every woman, every disciple, it's time for baptism by fire. Abba, Father, 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 it's the promise. Father. Are you ready, my brother? It's the spirit of fire. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire and with fire. One more time. Papa, Daddy. Jesus the Christ was crucified, he was buried, and he rose. What day did he rise? The third day. Was Jesus risen the third day? If it was the third day, say free. If it was the third day, say free. Let your eyes be fixed upon Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. I will count till free, and at free you will shout Jesus. And when you shout Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Are you ready to receive, my brother? Are you ready to receive, my sister? One. Lift up your hands to receive. He becomes manifest in many ways. Two. He wants uh, the people to know he is alive through you. He wants to reveal himself to the world through you. So I've said one and two. And now, if you are ready to receive the power of God, the power from above, free. Jesus, receive, receive power, receive power, receive power, receive power, receive power. Re fire, 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 fire. Receive, receive, receive fire, power, the fire, 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 receive, help them, help them, receive, receive, please help them, receive, receive power, 
receive a baptism of fire everyone inside outside everyone every person at the sound of my voice receive fire receive fire fire comes upon you fire comes upon you fire comes upon you fire comes upon you repere seterian de rebo koteria baba rebo seketerian de rebo si ishatara are you calling are you parebo shedereba you will know he's alive. You will know you've met with fire. Mete rebo se teriande rebosia. I catarabo se teriababose. I tarababo se ke teriande rebebebebebe. Rabababababa. Rebe rebobo. We give you the glory. Spirit of God, we are thirsty for you. We desire you. Rebo se terebosia. Don't stop praying in the spirit because today is the day of the encounter. It's the day of the encounter. Le kataraka se terian de rebosia. I katarabo se ketere ma se terebosa. It is written. Lower the volume. It is written in Matthew chapter 10. Follow me, listen to me. Those who receive the manifestation of fire, it's not over in Matthew chapter 10. It is written. And when he had called the 12 disciples, give me the verse, please. Give me the verse. If there's still someone in the studio today, each person, each and everyone must receive a divine touch from God. Say amen. It will not be manifest in the same way for everyone. But I guarantee that in your spirit, in your soul and in your body, you will receive God's touch. A special visitation from God. Stay connected. It is written, and when he had called his twelve disciples to him, Matthew 10 verse 1, he gave them power. Say with me authority. Say with me authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. Jesus called his disciples. You hear the sound of my voice, my brother, my sister, inside and outside as you are connected wherever you are. Jesus is calling you now to communicate authority to you. Say with me, authority. Say with me, authority. Nobody will touch you. And you will not necessarily feel something, but you will receive something. This word was given me to confirm to you that I do not just speak generally, whether you fall or not, whether anything special feels like it's happening. Something comes into your life today, into your hand today. Jesus wants people to know he is alive through you. Say amen. He gave them power. It means authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. That power which is upon you right now. Jesus the Christ is risen on the third day. I will again count to three. And when I say free, you will shout with all your heart, Jesus, and you will lift up your hands to receive the power from today, a new power, a new authority, a new grace. Say with me, grace. I haven't heard say grace. It means a capacity is given you this morning to cast out impure spirits and clean spirits and to heal all sorts of diseases, all sorts of infirmities, sicknesses. It won't be tomorrow, but it happens today. It happens now. Say with me now. And I will count till free. And you will say, Jesus, because it is to him that we turn our eyes. And when we turn our eyes to him, we are never covered with shame. No, he watches over his word to accomplish it. It's a capacity that is given to every person who hears the sound of my voice. One, Rebo Shete, lift your hands. Two, Le 
Rabababa. It's a capacity. If you already had it, it will intensify. It will increase. It will increase. It will increase. It will increase. Free. Jesus. Receive, receive it, receive, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. It's a capacity, it's a capacity, it's a power in the world of darkness to know that you are alive, to know that you are there. Receive that capacity, lift your hands, receive. It's power, power to operate in authority over unclean spirits, over sicknesses, all sorts of sicknesses, all sorts of, of diseases. Jesus communicates that power. Are you giving him the glory? Lift your hands. Clap onto Jesus. Acclaim Jesus. Clap like someone who has received. Acclaim him as someone who has received. My brother, acclaim Jesus like someone who has received. You have received received you have received you have received you have received you have received acclaim him like someone the quality of your acclamation is the quality of the deposit you have received someone if you believe you've received, say amen. In Acts chapter 6, verse 8. And now, in every connected campus and here in the main campus, right now is the time where a particular grace, a particular grace, God has chosen some people for himself. Acts 6 verse 8, it is written, and Stephen, full of faith and power, say with me, full of faith and power, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Stephen was not known. Stephen was a simple brother, zealous, loving God, a disciple of Jesus Christ. There are Stephens that God wants to raise right now in every compass connected, in every connected compass. Where are the Stephens? You will recognize them because they will shout and receive a counsel free. You don't need to speak one, two, three. Receive the grace. Receive receive the grace of wonders the same the grace of wonders receive 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 that grace finds you where you are everywhere you are everywhere help them receive grace 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 to do great miracles to do great wonders among the people among the people among the people receive that grace receive that grace it's a special grace it's a special grace to operate in the miraculous to operate wonders of another category wonders receive that grace in the name of jesus receive that grace a special grace it's released today to make you a witness at another level is someone receiving that grace lord we thank you thank you for grace thank you for the gift of miracles and great wonders being full of faith god gives you the gift of faith god gives you the gift of faith to operate great wonders among the people I ask you to find those people, those who received that grace. They must be accompanied. They must be accompanied. They must be followed up. It's very important. Can someone say amen? Apart from Stephen's, Acts chapter 8, verse 5, says, Then Philip, say Philip with me. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Verse 6 says, and the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Today, we indoors, outdoors, connected churches at the 
sound of my voice, I count to free to grace of God for evangelism, to evangelize with power, with power. God raises Stephen's, Philips, God raises Philips. Where are the Philips? Where are the Philips? Glorious Holy Spirit, may the power, may the power of God to evangelize in the dimension of Philips be released. One, two, three, receive, receive, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. God raises Philips. God raises Philips powerful evangelists soul winners who will be followed by signs and wonders to win souls may that grace be upon you my sister in every church in every church in every connected campus that grace receive it in the name of jesus it's god's deposit receive that grace lord we thank you for that grace we thank you for that grace in the name of jesus Thank you for that grace. Receive our thanksgiving. Receive all the glory. Can someone say amen, amen, and acclaim God? It's not over. Can I continue? The Lord wants to heal this morning. The Lord wants to deliver this morning. Rebo shata rabo seketeriaba. The Lord wants to set captives free. The anointing of the Lord is upon me. There is somebody, you hear me, men, women, young and less young. You are hostages to masturbation. You are hostages to impurity. Spirits of impurity have taken over your body and you spend mas your time masturbating, following pornography. And you are not always comfortable and you don't want to admit it. You feel bad, but you don't want to admit it because those spirits fill you with pride. And there's someone else you are always in fornication and you are a hostage you surrendered yourself by mistake you made a mistake and now you're no longer free your life is hostage to a spirit of debauchery it's a spirit of debauchery that controls your life that oppresses you and you are not even free to worship god anymore and you lie a lot because you don't want it to be known the lord doesn't blame you the lord does not condemn you the lord has compassion over you can someone say amen for our brothers and sisters who are concerned? So today the Lord anoints us. Before I pray for the sick, before I command the healing of the sick, you need to repent for a few moments as I speak. You know in your heart. I give you 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, I'll pray with you if you agree. And the assembly, the assembly will pray in the name of Jesus for you to be set free from every spirit of impurity. They give you dreams. You see, you have dreams where you see a dog or a cat biting you. It's a spirit of impurity and it manifests. You have really bad, dirty thoughts. If people ask you to say what you are thinking of, you're not comfortable because you know it's bad. The Lord Jesus wants to set you free today because you're a hostage. You are captive. There are many things the Lord is saying but in the name of jesus in your heart you have repented in your heart you've asked for forgiveness and so now in the name of jesus of nazareth the christ by the blood of jesus that was shed at the cross of calvary and through which all men are set free those who believe are set free by the precious blood of jesus that was shed the power of you spirit of impurity you spirit of debauchery the power you held on this man this that woman at the sound of my voice i command now by the power of the holy spirit the hand of the lord comes upon you now i command every spirit of impurity that tires and that oppresses the life of that woman to every spirit of debauchery impure spirit demonic spirit set her free set them free go you are stopping those beloved from loving god from becoming close to god in the name of jesus christ spirit of impurity spirit of debauchery release that soul release that man your covenant which you built by blood is destroyed in the name of jesus set them free now in the name of jesus christ Set them free now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak now. Put your hand where you are in pain. If you are sick today, if you are sick, time has gone. Is there a sickness that is troubling 
you from the sole of your feet to the top of your head. The Lord is here without an effort. He is the healer. It's not the pastor who heals. It is written, he sent his word and his word healed all their diseases and brought them out of the pit. If you are sick, put your hand where you are feeling pain on your hips, on your back that is paining you, that is paining you so much, on your bones, or in your respiratory system that is paining you, your stomach, you have pain in your stomach, and even you feel like things are moving in your stomach, it's painful, and even in your feet, you have pain in your feet, in your toes, you feel pain, pain, your blood circulation is affected, whatever pain, your head, your eye, every system in your body from the sole of your feet to the top of your head, in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, I will count to three. You don't even need to say Jesus. I will count to three. Put your hand where you're in pain. If you're in pain in many places, just lift your hand to receive God's touch. It's the Spirit of God, the power of God that will touch you, visit you. My sister, you don't have to suffer. You had to go through an operation. You don't have to. Jesus experienced that operation on your behalf. His body was broken. His blood was shed for your body no longer to be wounded, broken, broken, oppressed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who gave his body for you on the on the wood, who shed his precious blood. I count to three, one, two, three. I command every spirit of infirmity, spirit of infirmity, release these bodies, release these bodies, spirit of infirmities, leave, leave, set their head free, deafness. Ears be open, ears be open, eyes be open now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sicknesses to the feet, to the legs, to the back. I rebuke you. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity as impure and clean, wicked spirits. Release those bodies, those lives. Set them free in the name of Jesus the Christ. Receive your healing because Jesus bore your sicknesses. You don't have to bear them. You don't have to undergo them. Jesus bore them for you. I command in the name of Jesus from the sole of your feet, if you have feet, to the top of your head. Receive total healing now, now, spirit of snakes, get out of this stomach, get out of this stomach. Painful periods, out, go, go, in the name of Jesus. I command set free, set free. In the name of Jesus. And you who are paining someone's testicles, intimate parts of your body, my brother, I rebuke that spirit of infirmity that pains you in intimate places, my brother. Receive your healing now in the name of Jesus the Christ. Lord, I thank you because you confirm your word. You heal the sick because you bore our sufferings. You bore our sicknesses. You carried our diseases. The chastisement that brings our peace came upon him and it is by your stripes that we were healed. My brother is healed. My sister is healed, healed from the sole of their feet, healed to the top of their head. You are healed today. Your children are healed. Your children, you who are in hospital, you are healed in the powerful name of Jesus. That word finds you in hospital. You are healed now in the name of Jesus the Christ. Can somebody say amen to God? Can somebody acclaim God? Lord, we thank you. When the Spirit comes, when the power of the Spirit comes, it must be kept by the life of prayer or you will lose the gift and the grace you've received. God has reawoken the grace of many. I say amen for myself. I've received it. But you see, it's a grace. You can lose it or you can maintain it. In the life of the Spirit, everything is maintained by a prayer life. You can learn all lessons by heart without having a life of prayer. Before the Holy Spirit comes on the day of Pentecost, beloved, it is written that the disciples were praying in the upper room. They were praying, they were praying, they were praying till the Spirit came, filled them, and started operating miracles through them. Everything you saw was but the result of a prayer life. Semen, Semen. Zechariah 12, verse 10, you know, says, and I will pour on the house of David, on ICC and all ICC churches. 
God that my mouth this morning wants to pour into the life of ICC, the church, in your family, in your church, everywhere, all the connected churches. God wants to pour out a grace. Say with me a grace. That grace, my brother, is grace. It's a capacity that doesn't come from you or your efforts, but as you feel led to pray. When you're, you're sleepy, you pray. When you don't feel like it, you pray. When you're walking, you pray. When you eat, you pray. When you sleep, you pray. Pray everywhere. Pray without ceasing. Pray in every place. It's a grace. Knowledge doesn't change anything if the grace of prayer is not present. And I will pour on the house of David and on I'll pour on ICC and every church. Say amen. The spirit of grace and supplication. The spirit of grace and supplication. Can someone say spirit of grace? It means he will distribute the grace of prayer, all sorts of prayers. Some will pray from this day. You will pray prayers of edification. And the masks are even helping you. People don't know you are praying. Every time you are praying, you are built, being built up. You are becoming strong. This prayer life allows you to maintain the fire. No fire is maintained without a prayer life. It doesn't exist. A prayer life is what allows the fire of the Spirit to be maintained. Can someone say amen? So you're going to lift your voice for a few moments, for 60 seconds. You're going to say, oh God, pour over me a spirit of grace and of supplication so that I might become a man, a woman who receives the grace of a prayer life. You asked for it yesterday. Ask for it today still. Lift your voice for 60 seconds. Do it with all your heart. Do it with all your heart. Ask God, my brother. It's not time to be be silent. Every grace is only maintained by the power of a prayerful life. You need a life of prayer. That prayer life is a grace which is given by God, by the Spirit of God. No matter what your responsibilities, your occupations, ask God, the Father, in the name of Jesus, to grant us the grace. The grace, I ask it for it again today. Like, I ask for it yesterday and I will last tomorrow. That grace, that grace, are you asking? 20 more seconds, ask God, ask God. He is reviving. Awake, awake, you who are sleeping, awake from the dead, awake. Be awake. That's the awakening of a life of prayer in the name of Jesus. I wake up. The Lord wakes you 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 up. In the powerful name of Jesus, receive that grace to be awoken in your prayer life by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you prayed with all your heart, let your amen resound. Let your amen be to Jesus, to Jesus, and let it resound. You can do all, you can lose anything but not your prayer life. You can lose anything else, but please don't lose your prayer life. When you lose your prayer life, you lose the fire of the Spirit. Please don't lose your prayer life. Can someone say amen? Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We bless you. Thank you for the different graces. Thank you so much to do, so much to say. Thank you, Lord. We have totally gone over time, so we give you thanks. Oh, God, we... The Bible tells us, before closing, I finish. The Bible tells us of Hannah, the prophetess. Hannah, Hannah. Hannah the prophetess in Luke chapter 2 verses 36 and 37 Hannah Anna the prophetess Anna the Bible says 
She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple but go served God with fasting and prayers night and day. The dimension where God is taking the church requires that God raises Annas, Annas, men and women of prayer who serve God in fastings and prayer for the kingdom, for the kingdom, for the kingdom, for the kingdom. Them. The Spirit of God finds those people, those brothers, those sisters. Before I give over the microphone, the Spirit of God raises. It's a grace. The grace. Prophecy comes. The minister of prophecy comes upon you. The grace to pray. You receive the grace to serve God in fastings and in prayers for the interests of the kingdom. No matter what your campus or the place you are connected from receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace the grace to serve God in fastings and in prayers in favor of the interests of the kingdom and at the same time the prophetic grace the prophetic grace the grace of the prophetic ministry is released upon you released upon you released upon you receive released upon you released upon you in the name of Jesus receive Receive that grace in every church. God wants to raise a praying church, a praying church, a praying church in all places who prays without ceasing, who prays in all circumstances, at all times, who prays in the spirit. That grace, I speak of a grace. God raises Anna's. He raises Men and women, men and women receive that grace. The grace, you will not sleep. Many of you will lose your sleep because God grants you the grace to stand in his presence, to pray. That grace is released on those who are concerned in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you because you manifest this grace for your church where you want to Take us. We need a prayer life to reach it individually and as a corporate group. You do those things. You do this work. Receive our thanksgiving. Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, receive our thanksgiving. The hour is really gone, I know. Any case. You won't see me for a good while, so just suffer me. I'll be finished in two minutes. Can I continue? Is there someone who is grateful, who is giving thanks to God, who has received something from God today? Is there someone, my brother, when God says he's sending, he's pouring, he will pour. God will make you shine because by the power of the Spirit you shine. Without the power of the Spirit, the world of darkness will take you hostage. Can someone say amen? Can I do a last thing that I feel in my spirit? It is written, clap unto God first if you've received acclaim. Clap unto the Lord, clap unto the Lord, clap unto Him. Say with me the Spirit of the Lord. Say with me the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Clap unto the Spirit upon you once more. The quality of your acclamation is important. The quality of your acclamation is important, my brother, my sister. Lord, thank you. Just quickly now. It is written in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. 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 For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the, another the gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, 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 before I end, prophecy, all these graces, to another, to another discerning of spirits, to another 
different kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills but it's for the profit of all for the glory of jesus in the church through the church through the church through the church can someone say amen you are claiming because you know this word is coming to pass right now it's coming to pass right now right now right now holy spirit i wait on you i wait on you holy spirit just a few moments holy spirit i wait on you spirit of christ spirit of god i wait on you it's almost over holy spirit to each the spirit the manifestation is given to each to each to each of us, to each of you, to each, to each magnificent Holy Spirit, to each the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the profit of all. Sing and worshiping, honor Him, magnificent. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands. Holy Spirit, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one, to each one, to receive gifts. I wait on you. I expect to receive your grace. Words of knowledge, the gift of healings, the gift of prophecy. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith by the same spirit, the interpretation of tongues. Just like you want to do it, Spirit of God. Spirit of God, in closing magnificent holy spirit do you want him do you desire him one more time holy spirit of the most high god magnificent spirit of god Let the melody play and pray in tongues, my brother. Pray in tongues, my sister. If you receive the gift of praying in tongues, take time to just pray in the Spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the apostolic mantle you've given me, to each the manifestation of the Spirit is given. To each the manifestation of the Spirit is given. So church, so family, in the name of Jesus, let's receive grace. Let's receive the gifts of the Spirit. The gift of prophecy. May your eyes open, sister. May your eyes open. May your ears, your spiritual perception, receive the gift of the Spirit. Receive the gift of prophecy. Receive the gift of the operation of miracle. Receive the gift of interpretation of tongues. Receive the gifts, the gifts of the spirit. Receive the gift of the diversity of tongues. The spirit distributes it to the church. He distributes it to the church. Receive gifts. Receive gifts. Pray in tongues. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Play the melody. Receive gifts. Receive gifts. The gift of faith. 
life, the word of wisdom. You will see it manifest, the word of knowledge, the word of the prophetic word, prophecy. Receive the gift, the gifts of the Spirit. Receive the gifts, receive the graces of the Spirit. Your hands are lifted up to receive. Spirit of God. Keep praying in tongues. Don't stop. Pray. Pray in the spirit. Play the instruments. He is distributing. He is pouring out. He is pouring out. He is pouring out gifts and graces to each, to each. Brother, you are in the each. You are among the each. Receive grace. Receive grace. It's the gifts of the Spirit for the profit of all. For the profit of all. He equips your church. Pastors, brothers, sisters in the church, receive, receive the ministries of the Spirit. The assistance of the Holy Spirit. Thirty more seconds. Don't stop. Are you praying? By the Spirit. I wait on you, Holy Spirit. I wait on you. I wait on you, magnificent Holy Spirit. One more time, Holy Spirit. I wait. You are honored, Holy Spirit. I wait on you. I wait on you. I wait on you. Is there somebody to acclaim the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Is there someone to acclaim, sincerely acclaim God? Lift up, lift up, lift up your acclamation unto God. Lift up shouts to God. He's worthy to be worshipped, glorified by his people. He is worthy to be lifted up by his people. To God the only wise by Jesus the Christ our Lord. Be praise and honor and glory for who you are, for what you have manifested. Lord, for this day of an encounter with your people, with your church, receive the glory, receive the honor, receive thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Can someone say amen? I forgot to do something important. I've not forgotten. I'll leave someone else. I wanted someone else to do it and then I will finish. You will not see me for many months. So bless God. Amen. It's good for you. God is good, right? <laughs> I take the opportunities because you won't see me for a long. Anyway, you're not seeing me. You're saying you are going to see the Holy Spirit. Whoever will stand here is to take you to Jesus. It will always be the case. And as we do so, God will manifest his glory and grace for you. My brother, don't neglect, don't neglect, never neglect the word that has come forth. Whether you feel it or not, the Lord says, my just shall live by faith, by his faith. Some, by receiving the Holy Spirit, will fall and move. Some will receive the Spirit like me, like you feel nothing, but I've received by faith and I've manifested by faith and I've seen these miracles, I've seen them by faith. Say amen. It's the diversity of operations. The Spirit of Christ doesn't do the same thing with everybody. It would be monotonous otherwise. So some might feel warmth, heat, cold, and the other doesn't feel anything. That's fine. Doesn't mean anything. The might just shall live by faith. God sent this word for you to know that the power from above is indispensable. It's absolutely necessary. In the midst of darkness, nothing but the power from on high will work. 
and one manifestation, one operation of the Spirit of the Lord is what will make it come to pass. He is with you. He is in you. And what he expects of you now is that you might go, that you might dare say amen. Sometimes you will try to attack a situation that is too high for you. Try again. Don't, be, don't get discouraged because today, my brother, my sister, God makes you able to experience the miraculous. It is to those who believed that this grace is given, not to a pastor, never. It's to all who believed, pastor, not pastor. Whatever you believed, you received, say amen. But you will never know if you've received, if you do not try. Try by faith. My just shall live by faith. There are too many people who are sick in distress and you are God's answer. Then you will be able to say, I shine. If you see everybody is sick around you and you can't do anything, you are not shining. Even if you have a big title in this world, the title doesn't make the man. It's the spirit of God who makes you someone. Can someone say amen? So yes. Mercy. Before giving the microphone, can you have a seat a moment? I completely passed this time, but is there someone who is here for the first time? We welcome you to ICC. You are not yet saved, not here not yet born again you've not given your life to jesus someone invited you the holy spirit invited you but you know in your heart that you're not yet born again jesus said if someone wants to come into the kingdom of god he must be born again first the spiritual the christian life is not just about making noise going to church every sunday no you first enter the kingdom and then you live in the kingdom you enter the kingdom through the door jesus the christ and then you live in the kingdom by the spirit of jesus christ the first step is to be born in the kingdom to be born again are you here not yet born again and you say pastor i want to be born again today you are in a connected church in a connected territory at the sound of my voice lift your hand or give us a wave in the chat this is the gift the first of all gifts eternal life god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but that they might have eternal life the divine life you want to receive the divine life to walk with God in the world of darkness like ours? Lift your hand where you are. Jesus is calling you. He can save you right now. Can we acclaim God? If there's one person who wants to receive Jesus, it's not the time to hesitate, my brother. Is there somebody in the connected churches? Stand up if it's you in the church where you are online. Give us a wave in the chat. Stand up. Give us a wave. We bless God. We bless God. The life of God comes on these beloved. Jesus was crucified from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Jesus was exposed. Jesus was crucified. Jesus was crucified publicly, publicly. And when we receive Jesus Christ, we do it publicly jesus said he who is ashamed of me before men i too will be ashamed from him of him before my father so when we accept jesus we do it publicly can someone say publicly so if you are still hesitating know something you are without knowing despising the grace of god if you despise satan that's fine but if you despise god where will you go my brother my sister stand up in the church in the place where you are stand up wherever you are stand up let's bless god let's acclaim god as i encourage people because this decision is too important it's way too important you need to give your life to jesus now it's today thank you my sister thank you it's today someone acclaiming god you are the reason why you are claimed because you are saying God thanks. You are giving God thanks. Amen, amen, amen. How do we do, Pastor, to be saved, to enter the kingdom of God? Jesus said, if you publicly confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will, you will be truly saved. Being saved is two things. I believe in my heart that Jesus is alive. Does someone believe Jesus is alive? 
I believe Jesus is alive. That's why I stand up and I want to declare it with my mouth. Because we are saved when we believe in our hearts. But the mouth must speak. The mouth must invite him. The mouth must invite Jesus. That's why we do it publicly. Say it with me publicly. My brother, whoever despises this decision missed eternity. Because he felt, well, no. But you see, this is the decision of a life. You receive life today for eternity. If you ignore it, you ignore it. If you stand or give your life like those beloved you are brave you are brave and we bless god for his people whom he's saving so please bow your head with me in reverence to god remain standing for those who are giving their lives family can we pray with them you're going to repeat this prayer with me let everybody accompany this prayer and these words so the whole church repeats this lord jesus christ i heard your word I believe and confess that you are the Son of God, that you came from heaven, you died for my sins, you were buried. On the third day, you rose from the dead. Today, I recognize, I confess and declare that you are alive, alive today, alive forever. Lord Jesus Christ, it's because you are alive that you saved me today. Forgive me my sins, wash me by your precious blood that was shed from the cross of Calvary. Purify me, grant me, give me the life of God, eternal life, divine life from today. Lord Jesus Christ, I receive you in my heart as my Savior, as my Lord. I give you the glory because you fill me with the Holy Spirit and you lead me from today. I will not abandon the faith, but you establish me. You establish, you will establish me in faith and in the spiritual family. Glory be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I have prayed. I declare that I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. Say amen. Can someone clap onto God for our brothers and our sisters? I just want to repeat one last thing. Today, this word that has come forth for you, whether or not you have felt something, you received something from God. Capture the words and go with them. Manifest the life of Christ in you. The Holy Spirit does not lie. He does not contradict himself. You've received something. Go with what you've received. Amen. Has God spoken to you? Arise, stand up, and acclaim the God who spoke to you. Glory and praise be to God. <laughs>